Hi, my name is Angèle. And has anyone ever told you that it's super easy to become a great saint? <laughs> well, we don't hear that very often. Um, but that's what I'm here to share with all of you today, this great news, this, this good news that it's very simple and easy to become a great saint. And we're all called to be great saints. Because a saint is a best friend of God and a child of God. And that's all that God wants from us is for us to be his little children and that we be holy like he is holy. And I've been uh, reading from this wonderful book, Abandonment to Divine Providence by Jean-Pierre de Cossat. And this book was proposed by Father Mark Goring. Father Mark Goring has a wonderful YouTube channel that I've been following for some time. He has wonderful uh, daily short five minute videos every day. And he's proposed a few really wonderful books. The other one that I really love that I can also propose for all of you to read is the book of uh, Miriam of Bethlehem, an amazing book, St. Miriam of Bethlehem. Um, but now I'm going st <laughs> to stick to this. And actually, St. Miriam of Bethlehem's message is quite similar to what I'm about to share with all of you. Um, I'm just going to share some of the most beautiful points uh, that I've read so far and hope to inspire and encourage all of you to really want to be uh, saints. And not just saints, great saints. <laughs> That's what these times need. We need saints in these times. Um, so he says here, oh, if everyone, ministers, princes of the church and of the world, priests and soldiers, the peasantry and laborer, laborers, in a word, all men, if they could know how very easy it would be for them to arrive at a high degree of sanctity. They would only have to fulfill the simple duties of Christianity and of their state of life, to embrace with submission the crosses belonging to that state, and to submit with faith and love to the designs of providence in all those things that have to be done or suffered without going out of their way to seek occasions for themselves which means without trying to avoid difficulties, without showing any resistance to what God allows us to go through in every moment. No state of life can assuredly be sanctified in a more exalted manner, nor in a more wonderful and easy way than by the simple use of the means that God, the sovereign director of souls, gives them to do or to suffer at each moment. Then he writes, The designs of God, the good pleasure of God, the will of God, the operation of God and the gift of his grace are all one and the same thing in the spiritual life. It is God working in the soul to make it like unto himself. Perfection is neither more nor less than the faithful cooperation of the soul with this work of God, and is begun, grows, and is consummated in the soul, unperceived and in secret. I move on a little bit further, where he says, The designs of God and his divine will accepted by a faithful soul with simplicity produces this divine state in it without its knowledge, just as a medicine taken obediently will produce health, although the sick person neither knows nor wishes to know anything about the medicine. <laughs> as fire gives out heat and not philosophical discussions about it, 
nor knowledge of its effects. So the designs of God and his holy will work in the soul for its sanctification, and not speculations of curiosity as to this principle and this state. So it's not so much reasoning about things. <laughs> it's living in a deep faith seeing that everything really is coming from the hand of God, seeing his presence, his working in every moment, um, not questioning things, not speculating, not so much understanding, but just submitting. I go on further, speculation must be laid aside <laughs> and everything arranged by God as regards actions and sufferings must be accepted with simplicity for those things that happen at each moment by the divine command or permission are always the most holy, the best and the most divine for us. So it takes a really big trust and faith in God, a blind trust. <laughs> So then he goes on to say, it is by doing the will of God and obeying his holy inspirations that we obtain grace. And this grace works in our hearts through our reading or any other employment. Apart from God, reading is empty and vain and being deprived for us of the life-giving power of the action of God only succeeds in emptying the heart by the very fullness it gives to the mind. So basically he's saying, reading just to, for entertainment or for my own uh, for my own desire to gain knowledge, and meanwhile I'm neglecting my basic duties um, and not following the call of God in my soul through the Holy Spirit, then I, I'm not gaining anything. It's just vanity. So... This divine will working in the soul of a simple ignorant girl by means of sufferings and actions of a very ordinary nature produces a state of supernatural life without the mind being filled with self-exalting ideas. Okay, I skip on a little further. The divine influence alone can satisfy us. Without it, bread may be poison and poison a salutary remedy. Without it, Reading only darkens the mind. With it, darkness is made light. It is everything that is good and true in all things, and in all things it unites us to God, who, being infinite in all perfections, leaves nothing to be desired by the soul that possesses him. The divine action, although of infinite power, can only take full possession of the soul in so far as it is void of all confidence in its own action. For this confidence being founded on a false idea of its own capacity excludes the divine action. So it's a disposition of soul that we have where we're constantly saying to God, I submit to you, I trust in you. Have your way with me. <laughs> Have your way with me. I don't trust in myself. I don't trust in my own way of seeing things, of my own way of understanding things. I trust in you alone, oh Jesus, and your divine providence and guidance in all the circumstances of this day and this very present moment. So the soul that does not attach itself solely to the will of God will find neither satisfaction nor sanctification in any other means, however excellent, by which it may attempt to gain them. If that which God himself chooses for you does not content you, from whom do you expect to obtain what you desire? If you are disgusted with the meat prepared for you by the divine will itself, what food would not be insipid? To so depraved a taste. No soul can be really nourished, fortified, purified, enriched, and sanctified except in fulfilling the duties of the present moment. What more would you have? As in this, you can find all good. Why seek it elsewhere? Do you know better than God? 
as he ordains it thus, why do you desire it differently? Can his wisdom and goodness be deceived? When you find something to be in accordance with his divine wisdom and goodness, ought you not to conclude that it must be excellent? Do you imagine you will find peace in resisting the Almighty? <laughs> Is it not, on the contrary, this resistance which we too often continue without owning it, even to ourselves, which is the cause of all our troubles. So the resistance, wanting to do things our way. This is the cause of all our troubles. And this is what causes us to lose our peace. Um, further, God makes saints as he pleases, but they are made always according to his plan and in submission to his will. This submission is true and most perfect abandonment. The saints live hidden from the world, which is so evil that they are obliged to avoid its dangers. But it is not on this account that they are saints, but only on account of their submission to the will of God. The more absolute the submission becomes, the higher becomes their sanctity. However, to decide the question in some way, I think that holiness can be measured by the love one has for God and the desire to please him and that the more his will is the guiding principle and his plans conform to and loved, the greater will be the holiness, no matter what may be the means made use of. It is this that we notice in Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. In their separate lives, there is more of love than of greatness and more of the spirit than of the matter. So when we know that what pleases God the most is letting him have his way with us, when we know that the best way to put a smile on his, on his face and to uh, bring him consolation is to trust in his designs. Um, then the love that we want to show to him is to, to do just that, let him have his way. <laughs> so this is a part that I really like here. Sanctity made easy. I believe that if those souls that tend towards sanctity were instructed as to the conduct they ought to follow, they would be spared a good deal of trouble. I speak as much of people in the world as of others. If they could realize the merit concealed in the actions of each moment of the day. I mean in each of the daily duties of their state of life. And if they could be persuaded that sanctity is founded on that to which they give no heed as being altogether irre irrelevant, they would indeed be happy. So all the little things we take for granted or think are unimportant, like even getting dressed in the morning, brushing our hair, brushing our teeth. We're taking care of our bodies. And this too can be an act of love. This too is, is a duty that we owe uh, you know, to take care of ourselves. Um, Every little thing, a, a coffee uh, can sometimes mean more than a bowl of soup for someone. <laughs> so all these little acts of love, of thoughtfulness, how to help others, uh, a, a prayer from the heart for someone who's suffering, um, doing the laundry. I, I mean, a mom has so many uh, opportunities um, with all her daily duties of cooking and cleaning and all uh, the service uh, that she can uh, do for her husband and her children. Or if somebody has a, an office job, having to deal with um, all of that, all the, the, everything, everything becomes an act of love. Every little thing. 
I continue. <laughs> if besides they understood that to attain the utmost height of perfection, the safest and surest way is to accept the cross is sent them by providence at every moment, that the true philosopher's stone is submission to the will of God, which, cha which changes into divine gold all their occupations, troubles, and sufferings. What consolation would be theirs? What courage would they not derive from the thought that to acquire the friendship of God and to arrive at eternal glory, they had but to do what they were doing, but to suffer what they were suffering, and that what they wasted and counted as nothing would suffice to enable them to arrive at eminent sanctity, far more so than ex extraordinary states and wonderful works. Then he continues to say, Oh my God, how much I long to be the missionary of your holy will and to teach all men that there is nothing more easy, more attainable, more within reach and in the power of everyone than sanctity. How I wish that I could make them understand that just as the good and the bad thief had the same things to do and to suffer, so also two persons, one of whom is worldly, and the other leading an interior and holy spiritual life, have neither of them anything different to do or to suffer, but that one is sanctified and attains eternal happiness by submission to your holy will in those very things by which the other is damned because he does them to please himself or endures them with reluctance and re rebellion. So on the one side, there's the... Um, there's the thief on the cross that is repentant, uh, that is accepting that Jesus is God, and he accepts his sufferings on the cross to purify his uh, sins, he submits, um, and then it sanctifies him and opens eternal life to him and then there's the thief on the cross that um, rejects Jesus and is in rebellion and the same suffering on the cross brings him damnation what a beautiful example this proves that it is only the heart that is different they're both on the cross but they have a different disposition of heart oh all you that read this it will cost you no more than to do what you are doing to suffer what you are suffering only act and suffer in a holy manner it is the heart that must be changed when i say heart i mean will so the will to desire it the will to do the will of God, to have the same will as God, God's will is, to desire what God desires. Sanctity then consists in willing all that God wills for us. Yes, sanctity of heart is a simple fiat, a conformity of will with the will of God. What could be more easy and who could refuse to love a will so kind and so good? Let us love it then. And this love alone will make everything in us divine. What beautiful words. And the one who had the most perfect fiat and submission was our blessed mother Mary. And she has given us a shortcut, a way to have that same submission as she does. And that shortcut is the prayer of the Holy Rosary. And if you're not already praying the Holy Rosary every day, it can start with one Hail Mary said every day from all your heart, asking Mother Mary to teach you to pray the rosary to show you what a beautiful prayer this is and then maybe it'll be a decade every day a decade of the rosary 
and then maybe the child's rosary, which is the five decades. And as taught to us by Saint Dominic and Saint Louis de Montfort, the actual rosary is the Psalter, which is the joyful, sorrowful, and glorious mysteries. So there's the 15 decades, which can be said, um, you know, the five mysteries in the morning, then after lunch, the five mysteries, or then the, then the last five uh, in the evening. What really helped me in starting to, to really pray the Psalter was rosaries. Uh, I have a 25 minute drive to go, to go to Holy Mass every day, so I use that time to pray. Um, to pray a rosary. It's just perfect amount of time to do the five decades. And then if you can get into that habit of praying the Psalter and have that great grace from Mother Mary to pray the Psalter every day, you'll notice how easy it is to submit as she submits. You start to have her own heart inside of you. That's what the rosary does. It replaces your heart with her immaculate heart, truly. And, and then you can submit, just as Jean-Pierre de Cossade says in his book. And who knows, maybe even have the grace to pray as many holy rosaries as possible, to be generous, um, Saint Padre Pio, he prayed 15 to 20 rosaries uh, every day. So when there is a will, there is a way. <laughs> we just have to have big hearts full of a, a huge desire to love God. And if we go through Mother Mary, then... Like I said, it's the shortcut to heaven. She, she makes everything so much easier. And um, why would we not take the easier way through Mary? Um, it's, it's a most beautiful journey when we take this journey with our Heavenly Mother, who takes such good care of us and protects us so powerfully against the attacks of the evil one. This is what I wish for all of you to have this strong desire to discover the prayer of the Holy Rosary and through the Holy Rosary to have a perfect submission to God's will and to be great, great saints. All for Jesus, trusting Jesus wholeheartedly through Mother Mary, and with our dear, good Father Joseph. May God bless you and protect you always.